بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحسن عقدا من لساني فقهوا قولي um, Today I want to talk about a concept called spiritual bypassing. Um, I don't know who has heard of it. If you have heard of this um, phrase before, just go to the reactions button at the bottom of your screen and put a thumbs up. I'm just curious to know um, if this is something that people have heard of. One person, cool. Okay, this is this is fun. Um, okay, Bismillah, um, Bismillah, Um So the the word spiritual bypassing is defined in a lot of different ways, but my favorite definition of it um, has been what my uh, one of my teachers, Micah Anderson, has described as using spirituality to avoid dealing with with what needs to be dealt with. So I'm going to repeat that one more time. Spiritual bypassing is using spirituality to avoid dealing what needs to be dealt with. My cat might make an appearance a couple of times. <laughs> um, so what does that look like? I think it falls into two major camps, which is one, it, it means you're avoiding uncomfortable or difficult feelings, or two, you're avoiding responsibility and you're using spirituality to avoid those things. Um, so examples of avoiding uncomfortable or difficult feelings is avoiding feelings of anger. A lot of people believe that if you're a religious person, if you're really grounded in your spirituality, then feeling, just feeling angry is un unnecessary or a sign that you're weak in faith or a sign that, you know, you're doing something wrong. And I'll go into why that's incorrect thinking. Another example of avoiding uncomfortable, difficult feelings is feelings of detachment, um, really avoiding accessing your own healing or avoiding um, having to talk to someone, maybe have an uncomfortable conversation with someone about something that you're, you're dealing with with them. So you just detach and you say, oh, you know, you use, you'll use religion uh, as a way of um, detaching but you're not actually going into your healing. And I'll, I'll get into that as well, inshallah. Another example of avoiding uncomfortable or difficult feelings is thinking that people can overcome their problems just through positive thinking alone. And sure, having a positive uh, outlook and um, mindset is very important, but that in and of itself is not going to solve all your problems. Another example is thinking that you must rise above any negative emotion. Like, you know what? I'm not going to, I'm not going to, um, I don't know. I'm not going to let my, uh, I'm not going to let my boss who uh, treated me terribly at work. I'm not going to say anything or report him to HR because I'm just going to rise above it because I'm such a good religious spiritual person, right? Um, another, the, the second camp is avoiding responsibility. So the first one we just talked about was avoiding uncomfortable or difficult feelings. The second one is uh, avoiding responsibility. Um, and some examples of that are pretending that things are fine when they're definitely not fine. And sometimes we feel like we have to, you know, fake it till you make it. Like, no, it's okay. It's fine. No, 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 nothing's, nothing's wrong. This is all okay. And so you avoid actually dealing with what needs to be dealt with. Remember, like the, the definition is using spirituality to avoid dealing with what needs to be dealt with. Uh, the second one, uh, second example is uh, only focusing on the positive, which is, I've mentioned that before as an example of avoiding uncomfortable feelings, but it also falls under the camp of avoiding responsibility. Sometimes doing with what needs to be done means that you have to face that uncomfortable feeling, but also makes you avoid responsibility. Uh, another one is that you believe your own spiritual, in your own spiritual superiority as a way to hide from your insecurities. So a lot of people hide behind their deen, their religion, their spiritual connection that they feel as a way to feel superior to other people. And in doing so, 
they avoid even dealing with their own arrogance or dealing with confronting how they might be wronging people by saying, you know, that person's a problem, not me. I'm a good Muslim, I'm a good whatever. Another example is having extremely high unattainable idealism, like high aspirations and goals, but not actually doing anything to achieve those goals, right? We say, oh, Allah's gonna give me this and that, and it's gonna all happen, but Allah gives you an opportunity to do something and you're like, you don't take it. You just say, oh, no, Allah's gonna help me, you know? And that's your way of kind of avoiding the responsibility of taking the opportunities that Allah has sent you. Another example um, is, this is the, the last example of avoiding responsibility is using defense mechanisms such as denial and repression. This is a big one. Um, and denial, the word denial is, is actually, I think the umbrella term under all of these things, both the camps of avoid, avoiding uncomfortable and difficult feelings and avoiding responsibility. All of these things and all these examples I've given you, really, if we were to categorize them under one umbrella term, it would be denial, 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 denial. And this is an interesting word because we, the way we understand <laughs> denial, <laughs> If you are uh, not on mute, please mute yourself. Yes. Um, the word denial, when we think about it, usually is um, when we see someone denying something that's very obvious to us. And then we say, you know, this person's in denial. Like, they, like, a really great example Islamically is uh, Bani Israel, right? In, in Surah Al Baqarah. They kept denying Allah's signs over and over again, no matter how clear Allah made it to them, they kept denying it. But we all do this in our day to day lives. And uh, I remember having a conversation once with my with my therapist and I was exploring this feeling I was having and I was like, I am surprised I feel this way. Because this is an unwanted feeling that I never wanted to have. And I have lived this long without acknowledging that this feeling is here. And my therapist said, well, we all need, all human beings need to live with a certain level of denial in order to survive. So I'm gonna repeat that. All human beings need to live with a certain level of denial just in order to survive. Now, that sounds a little counterintuitive. Like, oh, okay, so are we supposed to deny or are we not supposed to deny? The reality is that our goal as Muslims is to constantly be seeking truth to our capacity and increasing that threshold little by little. So sometimes the only way we could survive as children, as adolescents, and even as adults experiencing really difficult situations in our lives or even traumatic situations in our lives, had to live on some level of denial. I mean, studies show that your brain will repress certain memories if they are way too difficult to live with. You will actually like that you will actually, your brain will actually to defend itself, to protect itself, subhanAllah. Now Allah makes, has designed our human bodies with this just incredible intelligence and, and this, you know, um, this, this defense mechanisms that just automatically happen within our bodies without our control. If we experience something extremely traumatic and it's too traumatic for us to live with, to remember, our brains will shut it down and suppress it and you will forget that memory. Now, there are ways in through therapy, through a bunch of different modalities in therapy to bring those memories back. And the question now is regarding denial. Why would I want to bring those memories back? If the denial is helping me, if it's protecting me, if it's making me feel safe and avoiding these really difficult feelings is better, why, why would I try to remember again? Because of a concept that therapists call post-traumatic growth. Because trauma doesn't always mean that you are, you, you, your end result is a broken person. Because the reality is that we will go to a point where we are broken 
but then we get up again. And I'm going to share with you an image that I um, have not been able to get out of my head. It's a really great image. Um, so I took this uh, free course that was being taught by Pixar recently, uh, Pixar Animation Studios. Um, and they talk about how to write a really good story. And one of the things that they talk about is the character arc. And I'm going to share with you the image right now. Thank you. OK, can you see this image? Um, yep. Awesome. So this is Woody from Toy Story. <laughs> and you see Woody starts here on the left standing. Uh, he's standing right clo very close to this uh, you know, horizontal bar, or really the thick black bar horizontally. And then it shows this arc, this red line, right? And then the second pose from the standing is him in a state of like fear and tension. Something is happening in the character's life. And then from there, the, the thing that he's tense about that he's afraid will happen is now starting to happen. And so you see in the third pose here, he's like, oh no. And then what happens is the thing that he was fearing actually happens which is the obstacle, the, the tribulation, the test from Allah happens. He drops down to his bottom point. So you see at the very lowest arc, he's on the floor. Now I really wanna focus on this one spot here where he's on the floor because this happens to us in our lives. The reason why we love a character arc, the reason why this is so important to a great story is because it relates to us in the human experience. Because Allah gave us the ability to be mini creators. He is the ultimate creator and we are mini creators who reflect back to him. And the best way I feel, I mean, uh, one of my mentors, Amir Suleiman is in the process of writing uh, a movie and in his screenplay, he said he, he felt like he connected more and understand, understood more the greatness of Allah while writing a story because he creates this entire story for uh, this individual that he loves, the main character. But the main character will not grow unless they fall down here to the bottom. And so this character now is at the bottom. And then he gets up. So right next to the, the pose where he's on the floor, he gets up. And if you see his, his hands are like this, his hand, his fist is on his hand. So this is, you know, in, in a lot of cultures and in the West as well, this is like a, a sign of determination body language wise, right? So he's like, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get out of here because he's still under the, the horizontal bar at the lower point. And then he comes up and he's running, meaning he's striving. He's, he's committing internal jihad to achieve his goal, to heal, to, ach to achieve the growth that is incumbent upon him to survive. He can't stay down there, right? So now he's running. And then the high point of the arc, he achieves what he needed to achieve. He celebrates. And then he's back to standing again. But you realize where he's standing at the end versus where he was standing at the beginning, he's slightly higher than where he was where he started. And that is the point, that is growth. He needs to end here. And the only way he could have ended here at a higher point than where he began was to go through all of this. Now, how, what does this have to do with denial and spiritual bypassing? Because what happens is a lot of people, if you look down here where Woody's at the very bottom, where he's crashed, a lot of people stay there. They don't get up. So what happens to us is something difficult happens. We have an interaction with somebody that's really uncomfortable. We are wronged by somebody or we wrong somebody. And that, sometimes that is the culmination, that, that moment where we have been wronged or we wronged somebody, we're down there. The only way to pick yourself back up in truth is to confront what just happened with a sincerity, 
with an honesty, with a dedication to truth. There is no other way to do it. There's no way around it except through it. You can't get through your obstacle around it, sneaking behind it, pretending it's not there, erasing it. No, no, you have to go through the obstacle, right? But what happens is when we are down there at that bottom arc where Woody is, we do one of two things with spiritual bypassing. We avoid responsibility or we avoid the difficult feeling. Well, we do both. Oftentimes it's both. I'd say most of the time it's both. It's a combination of both because you have a responsibility to yourself. You have a responsibility to heal yourself and to move forward towards truth. So when he's down there, maybe he needs to be in denial a little bit. Just to, to cushion the blow of falling down right? Like, okay, it wasn't that bad, you know, but the only way he's going to get back up and have something to fight for that is of truth and justice is by acknowledging, acknowledging what he did wrong or acknowledging how he was wronged. And the reason why this is so scary for a lot of people is one, it's hard to feel these feelings. It's, it's hard to feel angry at someone that you love because usually the only people who hurt us are people who mean something to us, right? We might not necessarily love our boss, but they mean something to us, right? Like our livelihood is dependent on our boss, you know? So it's, it, it means in, if, if you let yourself feel angry towards this person in your life who you love or who's important to you, then what does that mean for that relationship? How do you handle that? How do you move forward with anger? How can I be okay while feeling angry, sad, depressed, anxious, fearful, whatever the emotion is? What we want to do is block it out, pretend that everything's fine, everything's fine, everything's fine. If I keep pretending everything's fine, everything will be fine. And that's not true at all. Because spiritual bypassing gives you the short-term satisfaction of momentary peace but it creates way more long-term issues because you're never actually addressing the problem. I hear a lot of people who are like, I'm a peace lover. I don't like to fight. I'm just, I love peace. But guess what? They are destroying their own peace by avoiding conflict. How? Because they're not reaching they're not getting up from that bottom arc where woody was and reaching towards resolution because the reality is conflict doesn't have to be a fight it doesn't have to be an an, an, an argument it doesn't have to be you know um saying things you regret it doesn't have to be like you know insulting it doesn't have to be anything you can you can have an argument not an argument you can have conflict with someone in a way that is pleasing to Allah. Yes. And the best person who is, who is good at that was the Rasul right? He was constantly in conflict with people and he did it in the most beautiful, most just way possible where he wished these people well and still wanted to forgive them but he didn't deny his own rights and the rights of others. And you can see it by reading through the sira and how he's dealt with, you know, his, his wives, how he's dealt with the companions. And he had the wisdom to know what to say and when to say it because he wasn't afraid to feel what he felt. When Aisha, I mean, when, when Khadija died, he didn't go, everything's fine. Allah's with me. It's fine. It's fine. I don't mind. It's okay. Khadija died. No, he, he wept and wept about it. He wept when he lost his loved ones and when he lost his children, when he lost uh, his wife. This is, this is uh, an example to us. We, we have to learn not just from the sayings of the Prophet but what he did and how he handles his own emotions. Because the reality is, and this has been shown in studies, that when you repress your emotions, it actually manifests an illness in the body. So repression, that doesn't give you any actual peace. You can keep lying to yourself, but it won't. But then you're left with this fear of like, 
well, what do I do with these emotions? And I would really like to share one more thing with you, which is a poem by Rumi called The Guest House. I highly recommend that everybody Googles this poem after I read it to you. Um, and I just, I wanna print this poem and just put it up on my house because it's, I, I, I read this to everybody, it's so important. It's called The Guest House, Bismillah. This being human is a guest house. Every morning, a new arrival, a joy, a depression, a meanness. Some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. He's talking about our emotions here, even the difficult ones. Welcome and entertain them all, even if they are a crowd of sorrows who violently sweep your house empty of its furniture. Still, treat each guest honorably. He may be clearing you out with some new delight. The dark thought, the shame, the malice. Meet them at the door laughing and invite them in. Be grateful for whatever comes because each has been sent as a guide from beyond. Now he's obviously there is really way behind uh, ahead of his time because what he's describing is how do not deny your emotions because they're a guest coming to your door with, and I'll read the last stanza again, because each has been sent as a guide from beyond. Your emotions are here to teach you something about yourself. And if you keep denying your emotions and denying uh, your, your, your hardship and denying what the reality is, you will not be able to heal. You will not be able to receive these signs from Allah. Our emotions are signs from Allah to teach us something about ourselves. So when I get angry about something, I have to check with myself, why am I getting angry about this thing? And I, not why am I getting angry like an accusatory questioning, but a loving, non-judgmental curiosity. Why, why does this anger me whenever this happens? I'm going to be really honest with myself and think about this. And maybe I'll have to explore some uncomfortable concepts to get to the answer. And maybe the answer is something that actually you really don't wanna hear. You really don't wanna acknowledge because it means that there's more work to be done. But you have to trust in Allah that you can do it. That's the whole point of jihad. Jihad means struggle, not holy war. Jihad means struggle. And the Rasul said, the greater jihad is the struggle within the nafs, within the self. So, the, so avoiding spiritual bypassing is a jihad of the nafs. And I'll take it a step further. Spiritual bypassing is a form of kufr. Why? Kufr is actually not a, a kufar, right? Is not defined as a non-believer or an infidel. That's not the definition of kufr. The root letters, so the Arabic is based on a triliteral root letter system. So the root letters of kufr, kafa, ifara, is the same root letters for a farmer. Now, why is that? Because a farmer would take seeds, puts them into the ground and covers them up. And a kufar, kufr, actually means cover of truth. The kafirun covered truth whenever they came across it and they knew it was truth, but they denied. They denied and denied and denied Allah's signs. How often do we cover truth to our own selves because we can't handle it? And that's why we have to be brave. We have to be brave for the sake of Allah, for the sake of our own growth, for the sake of being at the bottom of that ark, gathering the courage, because by the way, bravery and courage, I think is a value that we don't talk about enough as a society. Bravery and courage is not defined by the lack of fear. Bravery and courage is defined by the fear. You cannot be brave if you're not scared. If you're doing something that's scary to somebody else, but it's not scary to you, you're not being brave, you're just being you. But if you're doing something that terrifies you, but you're doing it because you know it's the right thing to do and it's the thing that will heal you and others in commu the, your community and bring you closer to Allah, that is bravery, that's jihad and nafs. That's what Allah wants to see from us, is that just the effort and the bravery and the tawakkul. Tawakkul means relying on Allah. 
And if we have that bravery and that tawakkul, Allah, I don't know, this is terrifying that I'm realizing that there is this issue and I need to confront this issue and I need to apologize. And I'm worried that it's going to make me seem and, and it's going to confirm my greatest fear is that I'm not enough, that I'm deficient in some way. Allah, this scares me, but I'm doing it for you and I'm going to apologize. Ooh. Allah will get you there with you with flying because you made your intention for him and you were brave for him. If you say, Allah, I'm terrified of acknowledging that this person I love is actually really, has really done some really unethical things. And Allah, take it from me. I don't know what to do here. I'm giving it to you, but I'm going to be sincere. and I'm going to keep facing the truth. I'm not going to deny it. I'm not going to deny it anymore. And maybe I need to have a conversation with this person. But Allah, please speak through me. This is uh, Musa. Musa's dua, I say at the beginning of my, uh, my talk today, because Musa has had a speech impediment. And Allah made him, not his brother, who was a very great orator, the, the, the messenger. And Musa was like, why me? <laughs> Pick my brother, please. And so he would make this dua. Oh, Allah, uh, let me get the translation of that. Um, but generally the translation is, because I'm running out of time, uh, you know, um, make my speech more easy, like speak through me, essentially. And whenever I make this dua, I, it's so much easier for me to have hard conversations or to speak when I have to speak up. So never deny that, you know. Um, and so in closing, I just want to recap. Um, spiritual bypassing, the definition is avoiding, using spirituality to avoid what needs to be dealt with. So you can be angry, you can make mistakes, you can feel sad while still being a good Muslim. It doesn't mean you're denying the signs of Allah. You are, you are responding. As Rumi said, you are acknowledging the guests in your guest house who are teaching you something about yourself and about others, right? And finally, confronting and being present with the difficult conversations and feelings is a sign of bravery and growth. Thanks, everybody.